Uh, uh, Jeff told me I got one song, so I'll tell you a love song. Well, actually, I'll tell you a dirty joke first, because everybody likes a dirty joke. And, and especially, I have, this is uh, Jack's favorite joke, and he came all the way from the West Coast. So, uh, I like the other jokes, too. Oh, okay, good. But this is the one, you know, you asked me for it one time, Jack. So, um, you know, I aim to please. Anyways, um, <clears throat> Donald Trump was out in California, right? He had to go out there to support this uh, guy who held his seat in the Congress for the last 800 years or something like that. Actually, the guy lost in the midterms because, um, probably because Donald Trump went out there to support him. But anyways, <clears throat> he's in Los Angeles. And um, somebody, all his advisors, all his people who talk to him, tell him that he's got to be seen with a prominent African-American, right? So who, who, he can't think of anybody. Finally, he thinks of LeBron James, right? LeBron James. That's all this guy can think about, right? So he goes out to the arena, and um, the practice is over. And uh, LeBron is down in the locker room uh, changing his clothes, right? And when Trump gets there, he's right in the middle of changing his clothes. And Trump stops, and he just, like, looks, right? And um, for those of you who don't know, LeBron James is a big guy. He, he's six foot eight tall, he's built like a brick shit house. And we assume he's big all over, right? Um, I can't personally testify, you know, to how big he is all over. But it's pretty safe to say he's big all over. I mean, he's a big guy. So anyways, Trump stops and, he, and he's just like looking. And LeBron says, uh, you know, Donald, uh, Yours could be just as big as mine. Uh, it's just a trick I got. Trump says, uh, 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 yeah. Uh, LeBron says, yeah. He says, it's just a trick I have. He says, before you get in bed at night, take yourself in your hand and hit the bedpost with it three times. <laughs> bop, bop, bop. So you'll see. Yours will be just as big as mine. Trump says, uh, 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 thank you, LeBron. Sure enough, you know, he gets back to Trump Towers, you know, it's the middle of the night, uh, the room is dark, what's her face, Melania, Melania, whatever, you know, what's her face is over there laying in the bed, you know, Trump takes off his clothes, he takes himself in his hand, and he hits the bedpost with it three times, bop, 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 and Melania's voice comes out of the darkness, she goes, oh, is that you, LeBron? <laughs> <laughs> all right, now that's, uh, that's all I got. Um, and Jeff gave me one song. <clears throat> but I'll, I'll take my survey before I take the song, because it's a love song. Um, how many people over here, I take it all over, right? So now I'm taking it on the Lower East Side. How many people here believe in love? <laughs> that's a good showing. I mean, even if some of you are bullshitting. It's <laughs> a good showing, you know. Okay, I'll tell you the story, and I'll make way for uh, Jeff and Jack. Or oh, it's just Jeff, I don't know. What's the difference, you know? It's just, it's just my nephews. <coughs> for his eyes only, she moves in the street, fire in the winter, cool in the heat. For his eyes only, the white dress moves slow in the summer. More or less, every man turns his head. The heat burns, the fire is fed, the young guys make many tries, tell many lies. Hey girl, I'm the one, I'll give you big fun. But for his eyes only, she moves straight ahead, no slides to the sides. No matter what is said or done, no one has the key to see what's inside. Old men cry as she passes by, their eye tells no lie. The truth that doesn't die, moving down the street, men sigh in side but feel all right they remember a night long gone out of sight a woman they touched in a special way when it was day the feeling would stay hey the whole round world moves to the sway of her feet even nice guys know it's not why 
eyes, but they can't analyze what they see. Huh, I wish I had that next to me. And so it goes under the noses of men through the day. She got to go to work. You know she got bills to pay, moving straight ahead, no matter what is said, until her job is done. She's through with everyone in the street. Now it's someone special she's going to meet. There's a change in her motion, the way she moves her feet towards this guy. He's not super high, not super fly. It's not something he's going to buy. So why is all this his? Because she sees him like he really is. Not too much pride to show how he feels inside, in a zone where he don't got to own her and something else. He sees her straight up just for herself. The touch, the kiss, the little talk, how you doing, the laugh, the holding hands, the walk through the park, the sandwich after dark, the ice cream, her face, her eyes, changing like a dream deep down. The warmth comes around. It's something real. It's something you can feel, but it's not something you can call because it's not for all the other guys. And it's his eyes only that carry the prize late at night when the fight and struggle of the day is through. The door is closed and no one knows what goes on when the blue window shade is pulled down. No one else around. Nothing left to do but let it be when no one can see. When she turns the key when she opens finally the secret inner doorway of the soul it's the part that makes you whole and then she lets him touch that place where you want to be so much it's not what you might guess under the white dress not even the lips the skin but what slips in it's the way she looks at him she lets him see something that's not for you and me it's never ever free not the good looks outside that your soul hot dog hold. It's what you got to hide inside. The beauty of the soul. Not young, not old. The simple, ordinary, everyday beauty of the soul. Just a real woman with real feelings looking at you, making you real, baby, through and through and through this moment in time. Don't need the water or the wine. If you look, you see the sign. It's yours and mine. Just a man, woman, boy, girl getting down the sound of what goes around coming round. Because you got to give and give and give in this life if you won't be lonely. And she gave it all up for his eyes only. For his eyes only, she moves in the street, fire in the winter, cool in the heat, make heaven out of hell when it all comes round. For his eyes only, when the sun goes down. All right, well, I want to thank everybody that played, all these Lewis family members and uh, everybody who hung out. Um, we had R Squared, we had my cousin Josh, we had my brother Jack, uh, we had Shana and Matt, we had Jordan Carlos, we had Professor Louie, we had my dad, Joe. We tried to convince my mom to play a song, but she just uh, refused, refused. Wendy. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play, uh, did I leave anybody out? I think I mentioned everybody. Yeah, I think you got All right. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close out with a little set. Uh, and I appreciate everybody who came out and played. And we were talking about the 23 and me earlier. Now you've seen all the 23. Now there's me. Uh, that's, that's where I came from. So uh, this is... Uh, this is, well, it's hard to think of what, so many bases have already been covered. People have done uh, so many different kinds of music and poetry tonight. Um, I'll try a few things on you. This is, um, this one I'll dedicate to uh, all of these performers, some of them, uh, some of them professionals who might have experienced some of these things sometime in their uh, professional career if, uh, or, uh, you know, if you keep on performing, the things in this song may happen to you. You bought me a brew once in 2002. You did a favor for me, and so I did one for you. Yeah, I put you on the guest list, and I did it on two other occasions. 
But when you ask the fourth time, maybe that's the statute of limitations. Yeah, I slept on your floor once in 2004. Now you still get free tickets every time that I tour. Yeah, I'll put you on the guest list. I was grateful for that sleeping location. But it's the fifth year in a row, so what's the statute of limitations? to say when things are going your way that you don't owe nobody nothing from way back in the day but you should put them on the guest list if they ask say yes with no hesitation but once it's been a bunch of years there's got to be a statute of limitations because when a band's on the road they get into this mode if you help us we guest list you it's an unspoken code so it's really not a question we can get you in the concert for free but some people think one favor gets them on the guest list eternally. And I'm not famous yet, and so I'm always in debt for all the favors I ask. And it's not right to forget, but you should put them on the guest list. If they ask, say yes with warmth and a smile. But if they really like my band, you'd think they'd buy a ticket once in a while. And someone gave me a kiss once in 2006 And when I played that town again, she asked to be on the list Yeah, I'll put her on the guest list It isn't such a big obligation But after 10 years of this, that's when she kissed the statute of limitations Well, you know I'd be eager, but I'm just not a big leaguer With the guest list too big, my ticket sales get too meager And it wouldn't be so bad if you would help us out again and again, kid helped us once and then your privileges got overextended well she's so pretty and sweet and she took pity on me she let me sleep in her arms and so i let her in free yeah of course she's on the guest list it's basically the least expectation but now i've been in a long relationship so what's the statute of limitation well i couldn't exist without your favors like this i'm lucky you even care enough to want to be on the list so you're all list for feeding us or putting up flyers but when it gets too out of hand it's either the statute or the band that expires because when a band's on the road they get into this mode if you help us we guest list you it's an unspoken code so it's really not a question it can get you in the concert for free but some people think one favor gets them on the guest list eternally
corruption and gluttony and sugar and fat. The me that I follow is just shallow and hollow. To just be a natural me would only be that. But if you act like an artist, then it makes you an artist. If you act like a sleaze ball, then it makes you a sleaze. If you act like an athlete, then it makes you an athlete. But it's always a challenge and it's never a breeze. And if you act like you love me, then I guess that you love me. And if I act like a dad someday, then I'd be a dad. So I could say it was true, the things I made myself do. Because the things that I did became the life that I had. I didn't want to be drawing, or writing, or singing, or working for money, or working for art, or being a nice guy, or having a lifestyle. Still nothing ever gets done if I don't force it to start. They say do what comes natural, just be the real me. Follow your true you inside of your head. But if I did what comes natural, I'd just be a black hole. I'd never get dressed or even get out of bed. This one. This is a uh, about the old man who lives next door to me. I've uh, yeah. gotten the habit of screaming in the middle of the night. So yeah. do your amendment song. This is the. Uh, oh yeah. Well, all right. I'll do your amendment. Well, I'll do that one next since I already introduced this one. <laughs> so. All right. This song is called "Sad Screaming Old Man." apartment and bedroom that I got started out seeming decent, more boring than not. For two or three years, nothing happened at all. There was an old man next door that I would see in the hall. He shuffled politely, he wears an old suit, you know, a standard old geezer, a quiet old coot. He used to seem normal, but then all at once, he started these nocturnal groanings and grunts. It's hard to get used to, and it gives me the creeps. Pretty much every night now, he screams when he sleeps. Dark night of our souls. Hole. I just need to get some sleep, I don't know when I might begin, but I don't want another minute in this same old story, purgatory, stop the torture, old man, and please don't be myself from the future. If it was a dog bark or a screaming infant, I'd probably be fine, back asleep in an instant, but picture me lying there, alone in my bed, when this old man just lets out these shrieks near my head, and now every night at like 3 in the a.m., I get woken up by all this miserable mayhem, who's being dismembered, what the hell's wrong, I'm scared that he'll send me insane before long, and it makes me afraid just to be me like I am, because it could be my fate, a lonely screaming old man, tell me, what did he do in his youth for this torture, and what if I'm him and it's true that he's me in the future, dark night of our souls, dark night of our hearts, dropping down the bottomless hole, I just need to get some sleep, I don't know when I might be given, I don't want another minute in this single story, purgatory, stop the torture old man, and please don't be myself from the future. I'm used to apartments with walls that are weak Sometimes I'd hear it all if my neighbors would speak But this recent apartment and bedroom that I got Started out seeming decent, more boring than not But now it's like trying to sleep in a Guantanamo cell block Or a hospital hellhole for some horrible shell shock Or a medieval dungeon with sadistic conditions Or some pitiful someone is getting whipped while you listen And you know it's the dark when your mind is just spinning And you get visions of weird things with no ends or beginnings I drift off for a bit and then he's moaning some more And I'm scared that he's me and I'm the hit from before I get some paranoid fantasy sci-fi scenarios They seem dumb in the daylight But for now again There he goes Dark night of our souls Dark night of our hearts Dropping down the bottomless hole I just need to get some sleep I don't know when I might begin But I don't want another minute In this same old story Purgatory Stop the torture, old man And please don't be myself from the future 
Well, you know, Jeffrey, it's true what you say. I once was like you, then I turned out this way. I lived my young life complaining what wasn't there. It was never enough to sacrifice for or care. And I once had a cat, and I had one or two pals, and I would go and hang out sort of like that way you do now. But now all I can do is just scream in the darkness, the pain inside 90 years, empty and heartless. He who grows as an artist is a rose brief and bloom. She know you've already started off on the road to this room. I forgot to blow from war in the dark and a trench, then I spent 40 years more in a park on a bench, and it's all oh, that's essentially hopeless. Eventually, you are just a bitch, and we shrieking like me, like you're meant to me. I accept that as a warning, but as an acceptance, so accept it. It is already written. It is already happening. You are already here. <laughs> When they wrote that, when they wrote that, when they wrote that First Amendment, and it's a really nice amendment, and it says that part about how we can peaceably assemble. Well, a peaceable assembly circulates 1700s, and a 2018 one, it basically would still resemble. And when they wrote that First Amendment, and the next part of that amendment, where it says that stuff about preserving freedom of the press, well, they didn't have no internet or tweets or television, but the just two. 200 years ago is the same now, more or less. And when they wrote that third amendment, even though it's not as famous, when it says we can't be forced to give free housing to a soldier, I'm still rather inclined to get a little Gertrude Stein and say a house is a house is a house, although we're now two centuries older. And when they wrote that fourth amendment against bad searches and seizures, well, a warrant's still a warrant, and a judge is still a judge, and a search is still a search, and a seizure is still a seizure, because some words might get new meanings, but these words all didn't budge. And when they wrote that Fifth Amendment, where we need to have grand juries, and we need to have indictments to pursue criminal cases, well, a jury's still a jury, and indictment's an indictment, and my argument proceeds along this same general basis. Well, I'm sure you're pretty sharp, and you can see how this is going, and the point is that our words are 99% the same. Out of all of those amendments, all those groovy, cool amendments, there's that one word that sticks out where what it meant has really changed. Cause that second old amendment, that well-meaning nice amendment, with that thing with no infringement on our right to bearing arms, it just seems a little different. Cause of napalm and bazookas and torpedoes and assault rifles, nerf gas and atom bombs. Cause when they wrote about religion, or the right of free assembly, when they wrote about fair trials, we know they knew what they'd mean. But that bit about the arms and the right to keep and bear them, could they really have intended crazy stuff they'd never seen? Cyber germs and landmines and surface-to-air missiles Gatlin guns and tanks and drones and Star Wars satellites Arms don't mean the same thing as it did 200 years ago It's the only word that changed so much in all the Bill of Rights Hey Jack, why don't you join me on a song here? All right, we'll do uh, one more song together here, me and Brother Jack. This is a song that Jack wrote that we played, uh, we used to play this song all the time, but now we're probably a little rusty on it. Well, also, should say that this past summer, Jeff and I celebrated 20 years playing at the Sidewalk Cafe. That's true, this is me and Jack's 20 year anniversary, playing right here at Sidewalk. It's very convenient, we grew up across the street. Thanks, Mom and Dad, for having the place so convenient. And uh, we heard there's some rumblings of some real estate dealings and some struggle with Sidewalk, so we're never sure how long Sidewalk will survive, but we're very hope hopeful that it will keep going. It's been uh, wonderful to have him here. Thanks, Ben, for doing all the good work here. It's strange, I think when Sidewalk first opened, I don't quite remember exactly, but we're like, oh, it's that fucking yuppie joint. <laughs> playing over here, you know, who wants to, and then after 20 years, it's less a yuppie joint, now it's one of the places endangered, that's, that's times change. <laughs> <laughs> Someone yell, call me a cheat. 